Hello! How are you today? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for today's events. I'm, I'm just riled and so excited for our little session today. Absolutely. So, have you, were you ever interested in the total drama? Like, like Island growing up or anything like that? Um, so I, I watched some of it, like, just as it came on as a kid. Uh, and I really enjoyed it, but I have not, like, fully delved into it. Okay, so this will be a shock to you, then, when we're reading fanfiction today. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this this one's a work of art, I, I swear. I've read this one, mm-hmm. like, five times complete. Wow. And, like, everyone That's... in the comments is a diehard for this for this fanfiction. It is so good. Okay, we got, like, a bestseller here. Absolutely. I didn't know that. Dude, the writing is on point. The development's good. Uh huh. And we also have our own little side plot on the side as well, which oh, I think okay. in this chapter we'll get into. So, okay. Alrighty. So I believe it is the Big Sleep Chapter Three. Yup. Alrighty. Do you want me to to start first? Oh, uh, sure. If you want to. Alrighty. Toot. Bolting up, I hit my head on the bunk above me. I could still hear the sound ringing through my ears, echoing to, seeming to echo in my head. Right in my temple, I let out a groan. Uh, why, uh, we don't catch a break, do we? Bridget must muttered, and I couldn't help but giggle, flopping back onto the mattress. Trying to wake myself up, I hear the annoying voice of our lovely host, Chris. Morning, campers, rise and shine. We've got stuff to do, and trust me, it'll be a very fun day. I roll my eyes, placing my hands over my eyes. Perhaps if I pretend to be asleep, they'll leave me alone. <laughs> Same goes for you, your name. Up and at em, I glare, crawling out of my covers. God help me. <laughs> After dressing into my comfy FC hoodie and leggings, I left the cabin, seeing a few campers already awake. What's for breakfast? I heard Owen ask, and I smiled. That guy was definitely a mood. <laughs> Actually, you'll be having breakfast after your next challenge, a 20-kilometer run. To win, your whole team needs to complete the course and be back at the main lodge before the other team, Chris stated, and multiple glares were directed towards him. I saw Eva ready to punch him. Honestly, it made me excited until Jeff and Duncan restrained her. Do you know who any of these characters are, by the way? Um, I have, like, a very vague awareness okay. of who they are. Like, in a deep memory at the back of my brain. Gotcha. I don't know if you remember what any of these people looked like at all. <laughs> I, I remember most. Okay. You've got to be kidding me, Heather repuls, gesturing to her footwear. I had to say, I was pretty pissed too. Guess that's why you don't wear heels on a reality show. Gwen smirked and I laughed. Should have let Eva get him, I told Duncan and Jeff, who jumped at the fact I'd been here all this time. Well, look at that. The princess is awake. How'd you sleep, sweetheart? I rolled my eyes. However, I felt my heart pick up a little. No way. This was not happening. Ignoring Duncan, I followed Chris, who was leading us to the beginning of the run. Damn. Cold. Sad. (laughs) Everyone took off, me maintaining a steady pace. I knew a thing or two about running, especially long-distance track. The key was not to go too hard early on, because it would tire me out too quickly. I glanced back for a brief moment, taking a note of the people walking. Heather seemed to be speaking with Owen while others were walking alone or already puffed. Focusing my attention forward, I kept my breathing even. Well, sweetheart, I'm surprised. Didn't you didn't think you'd be able to keep up with the big guys? I gave a quick glance to my left with Duncan locking eyes with me. The same heart rate came back. However, it would be easy to blame it on the running. What's the matter, Duncan? Afraid a girl will beat you? I smirked, and I could tell he was beginning to get frustrated, as with a grunt, he began to push forward in front of me. Two can play at that game. Forcing my legs, I matched his pace once again, sending a wink his way before bolting past him. See you at the finish line! (laughs) Already got some flirtation behavior building up. It is heating up, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, the, the romance is building! It's it's getting there. It's in its first stages. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bolted up the stairs of the main lodge, feeling my heart beating up in my throat. Collapsing on the chair, Duncan fell beside me. Good one, he panted. 
making me let out a forced laugh, trying to get as much air as possible. Sitting up straight, I noticed a few more people making their way into the lodge. Jeff, DJ, Tyler, Bridget, all the athletic type people. I rested my head on the table, tracing my finger along the wood. I could feel a pair of eyes watching me, however. I was too distracted to care. A short while later, everyone was everyone was at the lodge. Wait, that means we won! I heard Gwen cheer, her fellow teammates cheering along with her. Actually, that wasn't the challenge. That will come after you eat. Chris explained, motioning for Chef to pull open the curtain. Behind was a display of the most amazing looking food I've ever seen. Everyone immediately began piling their plates while I hung back. I've always been a fussy eater, and a majority of the food didn't look ap- appealing to me. Taking a plate, I found a few things I'd enjoy, nothing compared to what the others were stocked with. Taking my seat, I rested my chin on my hands, listening to the conversation. So what do you think the challenge actually is, Courtney questioned, shoving another fork full of turkey into her mouth. Who knows? If you haven't noticed, Chris hasn't been exactly nice to us, Harold stated. Boo-hoo, nothing's gonna stop me from winning this, Duncan smirked, a smug look on his face. I rolled up my eyes. Just a side note, I don't know what it is, I just do not like Courtney whatsoever. <laughs> I, just, I just don't get her for, like, some taste. reason. Mm-hmm. I watched Jeff whisper something into his ear, causing Duncan to turn red. Shut up! He crossed his arms, still looking a tad bit flustered. It was funny seeing him like this, a lot less mean. Duncan recalled the conversation. So Jeff thinks I'm going soft because of some girl. Sure, the guy can think that all he wants, but I can tell you now, there is no way I'm letting YN get in the way of me winning. The cameraman laughed and Duncan glared. I'd watch it if I were you. I got some denial going on. Yo, he's so fucking Sundere, it's not even funny. (laughs) No, he really is. He is the poster boy of of Sundere-ism. (laughs) <laughs> He's the fucking leader of the Cinderets. <laughs> <laughs> well, he invented the Cinderet genre. Yo, he's the president of the Cinderets. <laughs> God. Sitting on the log, I looked around, noticing how everyone was stuffed from the food. I, on the other hand, was fine. Well, campers, are we ready for the challenge of today? With groans here and there, and Chris chuckled. I call this challenge the Awakeathon. The last person awake at the end of this wins. And trust me, I expect you all to be out within the next couple hours. Good luck. You'll definitely need it this time. Crossing my legs, I watched the other competitors. Courtney began jogging on the spot, which made me raise a brow. Won't that tire you out quicker? The best thing to do is is to be conserving your energy. Zip it, YN. I know what I'm doing. I shrugged before grabbing a rock. I began carving small things into the sump, questioning, questioning as to what was to happen. Twelve hours later. <laughs> that is a gigantic time skip. Dude, this challenge goes on for five days. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a, a a big one to put into chapter three, but alright. I mean, that's what happens in the show. Like, they go from jumping off a cliff to, like, having to stay mm-hmm. awake for as long as possible, which ends up being, I think, four to five days. Jesus. Yeah. Christopher McCleanington. <laughs> McCleanington? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Perfect. <laughs> His full legal name. You want me- moved- oh, sorry. <laughs> You're good. You're good. I had moved to sit on the ground, resting against one of the stumps. Fatigue hadn't hit me yet, but I could tell the others were beginning to feel it. Hearing a thump, I glanced over, seeing Owen had been the first one to hit the ground. It meant we were one person closer to winning. I turned my attention to Gwen and Trent, gazing up at the stars. I smiled to myself. It may have only been a couple of days, wow, but <laughs> I could tell those two were already head over heels for each other. Hugging my knees to my chest, I rested my chin on my knees, trying to keep my mind active. As I thought of my home, I saw a figure moving towards me. Wonder who it is. I wonder, wonder who, who it could, could possibly be. There is no way of I telling know. who it could be. Yeah, I mean, no. How long until everyone else is out? Duncan asked, moving over next to me. I shrugged, glancing around. From the looks of it, people will start dropping like flies. Won't be surprised if you're one of them. I laughed, him cracking a smile. Don't need to worry about me, gorgeous. I know how to keep awake. You, however, will probably want your beauty sleep soon. I scoffed, which made him smirk. 
Trust me, Juvie, they'll hit you sooner than later. To pass the time, Duncan and I got talking about our experiences, our homes, and our lives. Look at that. We already have some bonding. We're bonding. And another massive time skip. I'm telling you, this challenge goes on for a while. Apparently. <laughs> so that's like... Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of how long that is. Because 72 hours, hours like... is three days. So that's like close to four days. I'm hungry to write it by 74. Yeah, that's four days. Yeah. Take okay. it up for a while. <laughs> that is, it, like, I, mm -mm, I could not, I would not even try. I think I, I if I could have my phone, I think I mm. maybe last two days without sleep before, like, I got knocked out, like, by my own body. I, I absolutely could not. I would make it maybe, like, 30 hours, and I'd be, like, on the brink. <laughs> it was down to six of us. Duncan, Eva, Trent, Gwen, Heather, and me. At this point, I could practically feel my under-eye bag seeping into my skull. Yawning for the 400th time, I rubbed my eyes, blinking. Come on, you gotta stay awake with me, Duncan stated. Although I could hear the fatigue in his voice. You got this. If you lose this for us, I'll vote you off, and that's a promise. He mimicked a salute. Aye, aye, Captain. I rolled my eyes, smirking. Resting my head on his shoulder, I closed my eyes. I felt his arm go over my shoulders, and for once, boy. I didn't mind his company. Oh, boy. Fucking sips. Let's go, <laughs> Now, this man. is a long paragraph. Do you want me to read this paragraph? <laughs> um, I can take it. Okay. You got this. I believe in you. Thank you so much. I need the support. You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> An hour or so later, Chris sent me off to go freshen up. I was proud of my effort. After letting the water soak my skin, I decided to do a bit of roaming around the campsite. I hadn't explored much and wanted to see if all we had were trees and bushes. Throwing some white rocks along my way, I heard a loud bang. Jumping, I turned to see what I hit. It was a trailer. Raising my brow, I slowly inched towards it. It looked quite fancy. Opening the door slowly, I peeked on in. It was like a mini mansion. A double bed, a deluxe shower, a huge TV, and more. Stepping on in, I decided to snoop around. Next to the bed was a picture frame. It showed a man and a young girl, probably two or three. She had bright, bold eyes and was wearing a white floral dress. The man was a well groomed the man was well groomed with a broad grin. Two were standing in a park, a girl having her hair in two braids. They looked they both looked similar, however, I couldn't exactly pinpoint it. Hearing a noise from the outside trailer from outside the trailer, I gasped grasped the photograph tightly, running straight back to the camp. Damn, she probably just stole property. <laughs> probably. Massive lore drop. Lore! Lore! Is, isn't that what fucking Matt Pat says all the time? He's like, fucking lore! Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what he says. I come back to the cabins to see Eva on a rampage. Eva, calm down! Courtney yelled, dodging a flying bag. Whoa, I cried, ducking from a flying blow dryer. What's gotten into her? I asked, making my way next to Courtney. She sighed. Someone took her MP3, and she's going fully ballistic. I raised my brow. Now, who could be the one to take her MP3 player? Eva, look, I found your MP3. I sighed, of course. It would be Heather. Uh, Eva sheepishly looked at Courtney and I, and the rest of the girls. Ha ha ha, I guess it wasn't stolen. I glared at Heather, her just smirking in reply. This was gonna be one hell of a ride. Eva, to the dock of shame you go! Chris explained, pointing to the direction of the docks. It wasn't exactly a shocker, as she did basically ruin the entire cabin. As I watched her leave, I yawned softly. After the challenge, my body felt completely shut down. At this point, I could barely walk. You've been dragged through hell too. Oh, 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 sorry. No, you start I, that? no you, if you want to, it's fine. <laughs> no, you're okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. You've been uh, dragged through hell too, huh? Duncan laughed, turning on the stump that was placed. Oh, shit. <laughs> turning on the stump he was placed on to face me. It was either he was overexhausted or the fatigue just hasn't hit him yet. Does it look like Captain Obvious? I rolled my eyes, a smile on my face. Admit it, you love me, he smirked, making me go red once again. Turning away, I stood up. In your dreams, Juvie. I heard him chuckle, which made me walk away. I was joking, he called, but I continued to make my way to the cabin. I never acted like that. What was wrong with me? 
Holy shit. Maybe we're a Sundere as well. <laughs> oh boy. We're the vice Never president. <laughs> <laughs> They're like beta fish. <laughs> Alright, so what do, you, what do you think so far? Um, it's definitely... It's it's developing. It has uh, a clear like development there. It it's it's building, and you know we can expect to see things mm -hmm. um, like gradually increase over the next challenges. It's laid the foundations. Um, so yeah, I will say in chapter two there was like uh like a like a your name like lore hip hop mm -hmm. and it was like wow this is uh this is a lot and out of nowhere <laughs> so that kind of took me off guard because it was like after my dad left it was just me and my mom and my brother and i was like okay okay all right this is total drama like can we <laughs> just pump the brakes but yeah definitely uh a better read than the harvey Absolutely. This is like they're they're on like total opposite scales. <laughs> yeah, like there's a clear like planning that went into this. Like they sat down and they like they were like this chapter's gonna be this and I'm gonna put this in there and then the next chapter I'm gonna do a different challenge and then make like the stakes increase. So there's a very clear structure. Yeah. I feel like, oh, shit, you know that meme where the guy's, like, have, like, that conspiracy board, and he's, like, yes, fucking, that, that's what the author was doing. They were, like, pinpointing Absolutely. all this shit together, and they're, like, this. This is a masterpiece right here. <laughs> yes. Alrighty. Do you, who started? I, I started. Do you want me to start again? Uh, uh, it's up to you, man. Yeah, I can start. Okay. That night, I couldn't sleep. Whether it be the lack of sleep prior, or the the racing thoughts circulating in my mind. What was that trailer for? Who was that girl? Why are my emotions completely out of whack? Things just kept getting more interested by the second here, and nothing seemed to slow down. I rolled onto my side, trying not to wake the girls around me. My mind wandered to Duncan. Did I have feelings for the guy? It's only been a few days. Surely I hadn't been sucked in already, had I? Jokes on you, girly pop. I forced my body to move as the sunlight streamed in from the cabin window. In all, honestly, I, in all honesty, I felt like crap. My muscles were stiff, my eyes were burning, and I felt completely unfunctional. That's not a word. From the bunk above me, I heard Courtney mutter. Dude, I don't know why, but when it says I feel like crap, I, I my brain switched around the R and the A. So it's, I thought it said I feel like carp. <laughs> Man, I feel like carp. I thought she was comparing herself to a fish for a second. <laughs> I mean, it's not, like, totally uh, unbelievable. I I would totally say I feel like carp. Maybe I've been playing too much Stardew Valley recently. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off. It made me chuckle. It looks like Miss CT CIT was finally feeling it like the rest of us. Yawning uncontrollably, I grabbed my black denim shorts and a white and favorite color striped shirt. I was not in the mood to bother dressing up, and if I had it my way, I'd be walking around in my pajamas 24-7. Opening the door, I exited the cabin, a voice making me jump slightly. Morning, your name. I looked to find Jeff rubbing his eyes. I laughed softly, careful not to wake any of the other girls up. Morning, Jeff. You don't look too bad, considering you fell within the first couple days into the challenge. You shrugged, looking over to me. True, I could look like you. I plastered a hurt face before hitting his arm. Rude. I smirked, heading, make, beginning to head towards the showers. I thought about turning back and asking him about Duncan, but what would Jeff know? Duncan had to be one of the most secretive people on the planet. I was certain that Jeff wouldn't know anything. I sat at the killer bath table, my eyelids drooping. Getting no sleep last night had definitely taken a toll on me. I could feel the deep, dark bags under my eyes, threatening to force my eyes closed. Duncan, you look like crap, Chris stated. The amusement in his voice clear. You look like a cork. Stop it. You look like what? <laughs> you look like carp. Hell yeah. <laughs> Taking a seat next to me, I gave him a sympathetic smile, letting him know he wasn't the only one who had suffered. He perked up a bit, shooting me a broad grin. 
Chris came over to the two of us laughing. Wow, four nights with no sleep for the both of you? That's gold. How much are you two hurting? I grabbed the fork on the table, pointing in his direction. Do you really want to know? I asked, raising my brow. Chris simply smiled before ignoring me to speak to the others. Before he can start, Harold busted in. If, it hadn't, if I hadn't already been able to sleep last night, Harold did not make things any easier. Resting my head on the table, I met with the blue eyes gazing at me. What? I'm out. He's frowning. He shrugged, crossing his arms and smirking. I rolled my eyes. My, my eyes. <laughs> but my smile didn't falter. Damn, something was wrong. <laughs> what did you say about the eyes? I said I rolled my R's. <laughs> God. Oh, shit. I really- cause there's this, like, filter. It's like an extension on Chrome for Wattpad. Mm-hmm. So where it says, like, YN and stuff, you can fill it in with your name and do like, oh, other okay. stuff as well. I really want to just, That's like, any- download it and change crap to carp. <laughs> Please. Oh my god. I really want to do it. Maybe I'll, like, download it after this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, yeah, here it is. Standing on the court, I felt even more sluggish than I had already. As Chris droned out about the rules of the game, I could barely focus. My eyelids felt like bricks, feeling like they were planning on dropping onto the ground. I rubbed my face trying to get some blood circulation. As Chris left us to determine our team, Duncan immediately jumped in. You and Amy and I are going back to sleep. Wake us up and it'll be the last thing you all do. Grabbing my arm, he pulled me over to our team bench. Excuse me, but I actually want to contribute to my team. I shook my arm, letting it fall out of his grasp. He laughed, sitting back and rolling his eyes. Oh, really? How are you- <coughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, really? How can you help when you can barely keep your eyes open, princess? The male smirked, making me roll my eyes. Whatever, I said. I stated, going to sit as far away from him as possible. A yawn escaped my mouth, with Duncan letting out a chuckle. You know, you can rest your head on my lap if you want. It would be much more comfortable. I grim at him. The next yawn leaving my mouth winced it in protest. He's bold. Bold. He's just bold. bold. Fine, but don't get used to it. I stay lying on the bench, my head resting on his legs. I had to admit, it was the slightest bit more comfortable than the wooden bench. Closing my eyes, I immediately felt myself being dragged into sleep. Duncan smirked. She likes me. I can tell. Wyan rolled her eyes. He said that? Psst, as if. She went red, turning her her face away from the camera. The whispers nearby oh, caught my attention. I kept my eyes closed, not wanting to startle whoever was speaking. If we, if we wake him and your name up, he'll kill us. Look at them, DJ muttered, the fret in his voice evident. Uh, I opened my eyes, slowly lifting my head up as to not wake Duncan. Your name, you're awake. We really need you and Duncan, DJ stated, dancing, glancing to the scoreboard. Courtney smirked. Well, since she's awake, get her to wake Duncan up. He won't kill her. I raised my eyebrow. Was there jealousy in her voice? Or have I just... Wait, or had it been determination to win? Either way, I glanced down at the delinquent. He looked peaceful, much better than the normal frown or skull he wore. I honestly didn't want to wake the guy. I glanced back at the team, seeing people pleading. Please, your name. We need you and Duncan out there. Bridget, Bridget smiled, and I nodded. She was right. We needed to win. Turning my head, I took in a breath and gently shook his shoulder. Duncan, I said, waiting for a sarcastic response. Nothing. I rolled my eyes. Simple wouldn't work. Smirking, I moved close to his ear, whispering. (laughs) I forgot about this part. I'm sorry. (laughs) Duncan, wake up. I couldn't contain my laughter as he had a shocked face, opening one of his eyes to see me. Very funny, he glared, my laughter continuing to pour out. You're gonna get payback for that, YN. I snickered, holding, nodding at my team. They're losing pretty bad. They need you out there. I, he raised a brow, opening both of his eyes to look at me. He didn't seem persu- persuaded to get out of there. Fine. Do it for me, I asked, giving him a small smile. Rolling his eyes, he shook his head, smiling back at me. Fine. Standing up, he glanced at Courtney, uh, her with a frowning face. But you all do as I say when I say. They nodded. Courtney sighing. Now, here's a thing I picked up from Juvie. It's called Rush the New Guy. Of course they brought me in. Of course they made me play. Of course I played dodgeball back in school. I've never been a great thrower, but i always been the one to catch the ball. At least I had half the game perfect. Heather threw the ball at DJ as I swooped in and caught it before it reached him. 
She grimaced me, poking out my tongue at her. As always, my competitive side came out. Each time I caught the ball, I passed it off to someone before heading to grab another one. As I got down to our last player, I noticed it heading straight to Duncan. Sliding on the court, I caught it with one hand. Now that's a grab, Chris exclaimed, beaming. Duncan offered, offered a hand, helping me up. Nice one, he smiled, keeping hold of my hand. I glanced down, and he immediately let go. Clearing my throat, Courtney came over, along with her scheme. That was awesome, girl, Sadie smiled, Bridget patting my back. She couldn't help but feel proud and happy with myself. Looks like I was finally making friends. Alright. That that was cute, early. <laughs> it was nice. That was that was nice. It, it was like... It was nice. Yes. A little bit of spice. <laughs> Let's see where... Oh, here it is. I chose to sit the last game out. Instead, I decided to sit on the bench with Bridget. I could see her eyeing off Jeff, a gleam in her eye. Ooh, does Bridge have a crush? I coo, a smirk plastered on my lips. She went red, bowing her head down. N no, I could see the blush creeping on her neck, making me giggle. How about I talk to him for you? See if I could squeeze out any information? I can not ask you to do that for me. Oops, sorry. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I was just scrolling sorry. down. Okay. I smiled, placing a hand on her shoulder. We're friends, that's what friends do. She looked at me, a glad look on her face. Well, on the subject of Jeff, what's up with you and Mr. Bad Boy? I rolled my eyes, feeling my cheeks turn a hit pink. I knew it, you- Shh. I cover her mouth, glancing around to make sure nobody heard. Look, I don't know how to feel about him, but it's best to leave that alone for now, okay? She nodded, me taking my hand away. I focused my attention back to the game, seeing Duncan on the court. I began questioning myself. What did I feel? Why did I care so much? Was there- I was here to win, right? Then why do I feel like I'm here for other matters now? And on the other hand, what did he feel? Sure, we were toying with each other often, but that's what friends do. Or is it? The whistle brought me back to reality, and in a matter of seconds, it was only Harold and Owen. I had to admit, I felt sorry for the poor geek. He was the main subject for taunts, and it would be hard to have the pressure of his team on his shoulders. Come on, Harold, you can do it. I smile, giving the boy a thumbs up. He smiles, getting the dodgeball. I cross my fingers, praying he wins, so they weren't forced to vote him out. Seeing the ball go flying, I hold my breath, watching as Harold goes flying back into the glass. Come on, I muttered, a smile forming as I see the two hands clasping the ball. I cheer, along with the rest of the team. Heading towards him, I ruffle his hair. Dude, I fucking love this scene from this episode. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, like, Harold has, like, like, a million different skills. And he, like, he mm -hmm. dodged it like a pro and did, like, a fucking Matrix reference where he, like, <laughs> fucking bent backwards to dodge the dodgeball. Oh. Fuck, where was I? Oh, here it is. Well, look who just won the challenge. Harold beams, marching proudly. I did. I laugh, watching as he goes to be congratulated by the rest of the team. Well, I have to admit, he did well, and so did you. I turned my head, looking into the blue eyes once again. I shrugged. Not too bad yourself, Juvie. He runs his hand through his hair, as I look to see Harold being carried by DJ and Jeff. I let out a soft laugh before noticing Duncan's gaze not having left me. Ooh, a little distracted, are we? I know, I look good, right? I taunt, laughing, as I head over to the girls, talking about the wind. That night, us killer bass were placed around the campfire, laughing and talking about the day's events. Seeing the cheer on everyone's faces made me light up. It was like a little family. I saw Bridget talking with Jeff, a small blush on her face. It looks like she was able to go for it herself. I felt the person take a seat next to me, turning my head to face them. Hello there. I smiled, ducking, nodding in response. It's shocking. When I when we first met, I thought you were just some um, too good for everyone bad boy. But I saw the way you helped the team today. You're nothing but a softie, aren't you? I asked him, raising a brow. Me, soft, in your dreams, darling. I shake my head, smiling. Whatever you say, darling. He smiled at me, and we broke down into a laugh. I let out a yawn, the energy from today's power nap fading. You should head back to the cabins, he stated, me shrugging. I guess. Night, Duncan, I say, standing up and heading to the cabin. I heard a mutter behind me, but I was too exhausted to comprehend anything. Sweet dreams, gorgeous. The shuffle of feet woke me. The steps going heavy and then falling short. I sat up, glancing around the dark cabin. Our, our girls were here, and who was outside? Softly, 
Standing up, I grabbed the hoodie and slid it over my head before heading outside. A dim light was fading into the dark of the woods, and I felt my feet pushing me forward, going to inspect the light. Following for a short time, I see a figure in the light, heading to the trailer I found earlier. Creeping out of the clearing, I hid at the far end of the trailer, listening intensely to any voices. Getting closer to finding out, the figure stated, a sigh following. It's been years. There's no way she of all people will remember. I raised my brow. Were they talking about someone on the island? Were these pe people even from the island? She was around here the other day. They're unsure as to what was seen. Wait, were the voices talking about me? Keep me posted on any activity around the woods. We need to keep an eye on the situation. She can't find out. Ooh. We're getting spicy. <laughs> Plot. Plot, dude. I love the way they build up, like, our backstory and everything in this. Mm -hmm. So, what what do you think so far? Um, the the development is very good. There's a good um, foundational relationship being built, and each uh, chapter gets more progression into that. Um, very well thought out. Alrighty. Um, do you want to do one more chapter and then call it? Sure. Okay. I realized when I like, when I asked you to do this, I'm like, oh, they. Do they have any idea what Total Drama is? I'm just gonna make them read this, like, weird fan fiction. Uh, uh, how funny would that be if I had no idea what this was? Yeah. God. You'd be like, who the fuck are these people? And why are we, like, doing all this stupid shit? Are these OCs? <laughs> yeah, you've never heard of Total Drama before. This is just someone's OC that they made. God. <laughs> they made a whole fucking reality show. With all these oh, characters. Wow. That would be really impressive. Not gonna lie. Dude, honestly, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Alright, do you want to start the first paragraph? Sure. The young eye color eye girl busted out, her locks flowing behind her. She was wearing a wide smile, giggling as she ran. A man swooped her up onto his shoulders, laughing as she squealed in delight. Daddy, put me down, the girl laughed, holding tightly, and the man uh, spun her around. He smiled, turning to see her face. Hmm, nope, I'm gonna keep you up here. He ran, the young child continuing to giggle with excitement. I'm guessing, I'm, I think I know the plot. <laughs> oh, do you now? Um, I have my guesses. Alright, well, keep the guesses in your pocket, because we're gonna find out some more shit. <laughs> okay, I won't spoil anything for anyone else. <laughs> My eyes snapped open, the cold sweat dripping down my forehead. That dream again. I've had it on several occasions back home, but nothing this vivid. The picture was clear as day, except for the man. If it was, it was as if a part of my brain was forcing him to be forgotten, unable to place a face or a name. I rolled on my back, seeing Katie and Sadie giggling to themselves in the corner. I sat up, combing my fingers through my hair. What time was it? Morning, your name, the girl said in unison, causing another round of giggles to erupt. I shook my head, a small smile forming on my lips. Those girls confused me so much, but their friendship was adorable. Suddenly, the cabin door opened, showing Bridget and Courtney enter. The girls were talking before stopping to greet the rest of us. Morning, Courtney chippered, and I raised a brow. This girl was had some whack mood swings, or it was just me reading wrong signals. I gave a wave of acknowledgement before getting up, as I did the last speaker clicked on. All right, campers, enough beauty sleep. Time to show us what you're made of. I rolled my eyes, flopping back on my mattress. Nope, I muttered, covering my face with my pillow. Bridget and Courtney looked at each other before grabbing one of my legs and pulling me down. Hey! <laughs> I'm just imagining we just, like, get pulled and we just face plant onto this hardwood floor. <laughs> In denim shorts and a favorite color long sleeve, I trudged over to the bleachers, accompanied by a large stage. Did I like where this was going? No. Morning sunshine, the honey-like voice caused me to gag before I noticed Dun Duncan nodding over at me. Morning sugar, I faked sweet, before him and I both broke into a small laugh. Taking a seat next to him, I put my feet up, crossing them underneath me. You like the looks of this? Not one bit. Near do I. I noticed Bridget looking over at me, wiggling her brows. I shook my head, giving a small don't-say-a-word glare. She shrugged, smiling, before turning back to the stage, where Chris was now presenting himself. Welcome to our brand-new deluxe state-of-the-art outdoor amphitheater. 
Okay, this week's challenge is a summer camp favorite. A talent contest. I muffle a groan, biting down my lip. No freaking way. Each team has eight hours to pick their three most talented campers. Oh, carp, carp, carp. <laughs> I was thinking I'm just, that. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying from now on. These three will represent the, them in the show tonight. Sing, dance, juggle. Anything goes as long as it's legal. We glanced over to Duncan, who snapped his fingers. I smiled before my anxiety once again kicked in. You'll be judged by our resident talent show scout, former DJ, VJ, and rap legend, Grandmaster Chef, who will show his approval via the chef o meter. The machine looked out of date, although Chef was showing it off no matter what. The team that loses will send one camper home tonight. Good luck! I pace in the cabins, my other teammates outside. I was avoiding out there at all costs before I knew if because I knew if I even stood one foot out there, Corny or one of the other girls would try to get me to audition. That wasn't going to happen. I reminded myself of the time a girl at my school did a performance in front of everyone. She got halfway through her act before her nerves kicked in, and she bolted off the stage crying. Everyone was so cruel, calling her names for the rest of the year. That girl was now my best friend, and as much as she was brave throughout it all, it put me off from, from performing for a long time. Damn. We got trauma. Let's you got go. so <laughs> so. Uh, Your name. What are you doing in here? Bridget came in, noticing my anxious state. She grabbed my arm softly. Look, I won't pressure you into trying out, but just come out and see what our team is producing. We need all the support. Please? She smiled, and it caused me to sigh in defeat. Okay, I whispered, forcing my voice not to waver. I was one not to show weakness, and I was not letting that stop now. Taking a seat outside, I was able to see the end of DJ's performance. He seemed so peaceful, it was almost like magic. I clapped, along with the rest of the group. Courtney sighed. Fine, sign him up. Next. Bridget beamed. That's me. I can stand on my hand for 20 minutes. Okay, that would be cute if you were a monkey, but I don't think that's what we're looking for. Next. Harold stood up, preparing to speak. Not happening, Courtney stated, and I rolled my eyes. And I just didn't understand that girl. Thinking off to the back of the cabins, I took five. Needed a break too, Duncan queried, glancing up at me from his position on the ground. A smile formed, and I decided to take a seat beside him. Yep, things out there are just too problematic for my liking, he laughed, causing my heart rate to causing my heart to go faster. I shook my head. I needed to stop that. He leaned back against the wood, eyeing my every move. Some days I wondered what exactly was what was going on in that head of his. So wh why exactly are you here, he asked, and I turned to face him, as if realizing his words, he sighed. Out of context, why did you audition? That caught me off guard. Why did he want to know anything about me? Weren't we all just gonna go back to our normal lives once we finish up here? Oh, this is where she fucking trauma dumps. <laughs> oh, God. Alright. I got this shit. <sighs> yes. Well, my father abandoned my family when I was young. Ever since then, my mom was a single parent, working long days and nights to provide for me and my brother. When my brother was old enough, he immediately began working, helping to take care of my mother and me. When my brother pointed out the ad to me, I first shook it off as some silly reality TV, and it wouldn't benefit me in any way. But the more I thought about it, the more eager I was. It was only a stupid dare, but my brother persuaded was the one persuading me to audition, and here I am, climbing for the win like everyone else. I shrugged. However, my feelings felt different. There was a pang of silence that strung in my heart. If things were turned out differently, where would my life be? Trying constantly to, to provide for my family while they both did the same? And what about my father? My mother never told me much about him, only that they'd been so in love and he left one night without a trace. I'd always had my suspicions, however. Before I knew it, I felt tears streaming down my face. <laughs> Jeez. Trauma dumping! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I, dude, I fucking hate it when- si I fucking hate it when people just randomly trauma dump. I hate it. Just like, like, you'll be talking about something like- like, you'll be in the grocery store, and you'll be like, Oh my god, they have my favorite ice cream here. I love strawberry. And they're like, Yeah, my mom used to get that when my dad used to beat us up. <laughs> Just, like, right, like out of nowhere. Like, oh, Hold on, wait, I have an image, hold on. Oh, you have a what? <laughs> I have an image. <laughs> hold on. 
Like, like, how do you continue the conversation after that? After, like, you start off with something normal, and then someone trauma dumps, and then you're just like, well, anyway. Yeah, like, like, what, like, how are, how are you supposed to keep a conversation going? Yeah, it's, like, impossible. You can't, you, it's like, you can't do that. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> oh, I gotta see this one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, just like in the thing you mentioned earlier, just be like, "Oh, I love strawberries. Strawberry killed my mom." <laughs> but, it, it, it's that. always like someone that's like a Debbie Downer about like everything. Yeah, like, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you just have a normal conversation? Yeah. This came out of nowhere. He was just sitting there asking us why we auditioned, and then we trauma dumped, and then started crying from our own thoughts. <laughs> Poor Duncan, honestly. <laughs> He's a champ for dealing with us through this one. It's chapter four. For real? Five. It's chapter like, five. <laughs> He's so brave. He's so brave. He's so brave. <laughs> what a gentleman. <laughs> honestly, yeah. God, okay. Damn, I'm sorry. <laughs> My voice wavered as I looked them away furiously. Duncan just looked at me, his brows furring, furrowing in concern. This made the tears flow harder. What the hell was I doing? Before I knew it, I was in the arms of the delinquent, sobbing uncontrollably. Hell yeah, that is a best boy. Step up. <laughs> like, Jesus. As much as I wanted to stay like that, I gently pulled away, wiping my eyes with my sleeve. I hated being vulnerable. Apparently not. But Duncan <laughs> hadn't seemed to mind. I made eye contact with him, and for the first time since I met him, there was a genuine concern in his eyes. I forced myself to laugh. Look at me. I'm an emotional wreck. I smile before standing up. He followed, and I looked back at him once more. I turned away before heading back to the group. Why, Anne? I turned back, smiling. Yeah? He exhaled, shoving his hands in his pocket. Never mind. I'll see you back at the bleachers. With that, Duncan disappeared around the other side, and I left my, I let my smile fade. I was glad, glad that he, at some degree, understood my pain. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he probably like rounded that corner. He was like, "What the fuck did I? D I just asked a question." <laughs> yeah, like I really did not want that. So why did you audition? Oh. Well, my. My dad left my mom, and my mom was struggling, and then my, my brother started to provide for us, and then he pointed out this ad. Wow, crazy, right? <laughs> and then starts crying. Eventful day. Um, as the sun began to set, I slowly made my way back to the stage, having changed into a pair of dry sweatpants and a white shirt. Hell yeah. I found the group shortly after, with a few of them surrounding Bridget. What's going on, I asked, making my way closer. Jeff challenged Bridget to prove her handstand, and uh, so now there's a bet going on, DJ exclaimed, watching as the boys counted the seconds pass along. I smiled before nodding over to Bridget. Has she ever done this? DJ shrugged, glancing over at the blonde. I don't know. She seems confident, though. I nodded before taking a seat at one of the nearby crates. All of a sudden, I hear a crash. Rushing over to Bridget, I see her, Courtney, on the ground, and next to them, a broken violin. Corny seemed to stare at it for an attorney before glaring at Bridget. You, you killed my violin. God, I didn't mean to. There must be something we can do. She picked up the broken violin. It crumbling into more pieces into her hands. Corny let out a cry before running off. It felt bad for her. Bridget looked downcast and headed out to the bleachers. Shortly after, everyone had found a place on the bleachers. Me having found a place between Bridget and Harold. I glanced back to look at Duncan. He sent a grin my way. I smiled, turning my attention back to the stage. It was nice to know that our friendship, or whatever it was, hadn't been affected by this incident. <laughs> this was up on the stage being It's the TDI Talent Extravaganza. Welcome to the very first Camp Wawanaqua Talent Contest, where six campers will showcase their mad skills and desperately try not to humiliate themselves. First up for the Screaming Gophers is Justin. He made his way down to a small judging panel, Justin making his way up on the stage. Personally, I didn't seem the hype around this guy. He didn't seem like anything special. He was doing some sort of dance with water splashing over him at the end. My nose crunched up as the other girls were sighing seemingly in a trance. 
I roll my eyes. Even Chef seem entranced with Justin getting a six. Okay, I'm not sure what that was, but dang, you got some moves, dude. Chris explained, and I sorted. Moves? Please, a monkey can do that. <laughs> Next, DJ. I cheered, watching as he made his way up to the stage. He began his rhythmic routine, it starting out perfectly. I noticed him beginning to seem uncomfortable, a ribbon getting too close to his leg. With a quick movement, he went down with a thud. I gave him a sympathetic look. Dainty and yet masculine. Let's see what uh, Grandmaster Chef thinks. I looked to Chef, hopeful that something impressed him. A two was displayed. I sighed. This was not going to end well. After Heather's distract disastrous display of ruining Gwen and Bridget's vomiting chaos, it was down to, to Jeff. If he could save the day, maybe we could come back into the race. Jeff came over. Jeff came racing over, panic in his face. Guys, bad news! He displayed the broken board and everyone crowded around it. What now? Bridget explained, still recovering from her recent debacle. Corny looked over at you, and you could tell where this was going. Why, Anne could sing! The girls and I heard her one night by the cabin. She's actually good. I glared at her. N no way. They began to stare down, my face growing anger angry at the second. Can you your name? Jeff asked, the others chiming in. I glanced around the group, get my gaze falling on a certain person. He seemed to be curious, with a small smile on his lips. How about for me? He whispered into my ear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You owe me, remember? Just act like it's only you and me here. I looked up to him, a lot less anxious. He was right. If I zoned out everyone, it would be a simple act. Fine, I stated, heading up to the stage. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe she called us out like that. No evidence. No evidence. Fine, I stated, heading up to the stage. Standing up on the stage, I sighed. Everyone seemed to have grown silent, wanting to see if what Courtney said was actually true. I took a breath, trying to clear my head, and then remember my mother. She was always in love with music, the vocals, and the beat, and there was one song in particular she had on replay when my father left. Happy with the underlining message, I stood up to the microphone, scanning to find Duncan. My eyes rushed on him as he gave me an inviting smile. Go for it. I'm not going to read this song. <laughs> yeah. But skip, it, skip, skip, skip. Skip. It is a little cliche, but I wonder if we just, like, went up there and just started singing with, like, no backing. <laughs> like, no, oh, like, I no hope music. that's exactly what happens. Oh, there's, like, a little bit of in, in between the lyrics. I'll just read those real quick. Okay. I kept my breath steady, not bothering to look at anyone else's gaze. Sing, sing, singing. All right. I felt as my shoulders tense, then relax. Slowly, I began to become more comfortable. Right, and then my mind began to trace back to my mother how the words would flow smoothly out of her lips as she sung this song to the little girl who had been awakened by a nightmare. All right, and this should be the last one. All right, at this point, I let the music take me. I followed along with the beat, keeping in tempo. Is there even music? What beat? <laughs> yeah, like what's happening? Like. <laughs> We pulled out a radio and just put it next to us and we sang along to the music. <laughs> I keep this thing on me at all times in case this exact situation happens to arise. Yeah, we, we were like, we didn't want to do this at all. And we were like, all right, fine. And we like pulled out like a, like a, like a stereo, like a speak, like a big ass speaker. God. Just happens to have this song ready. No yeah. reason. They're like, guys, guys, don't make me go up there. I don't want to look. Please tell me you've seen that vine. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. It's just like that. It's like, guys, don't force me to. I'm not even that good. And then they start singing beautifully. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Oh, okay. Even though I could have continued, I ended it there, letting my voice slowly fade into the music. It was silent, nothing but the chirping of the dusk crickets. I flew my gaze to the floor, waiting for the eruption of laughter. Instead, I was greeted with a round of applause. I looked up, my eyes lingering over each person. Everyone was clapping, even the gophers, except for Heather, which was expected. Even Chris was clapping. A shocked face seems evident. Uh, I swore I saw a gleam of a tear in his eye, but maybe it didn't trick of the light. Before anyone could speak, Chef acted for himself. A perfect nine was displayed on his machine, making my team erupt into another chorus of cheers. 
Looks like the killer bass win again. Gophers, I'll see you all at the elimination ceremony, Chris explained. As my way, as I made my way back to the cabins, the others were chatting with excitement. That was amazing, Bridget beamed, with Jeff and Harold holding in agreement. Oh, nodding. Sorry. <laughs> Why did they think this in holding? <laughs> it's a good. That was spectacular, DJ added, a smile plastered on their faces. If anyone brings that up, look out. I smiled before fading into the back of the pack. Seeing Duncan lean against the cabin rails, I smiled, moving over to stand beside him. You look like you had fun, he stated, causing my smile to widen. I guess I did, I admitted, resting my elbows on the rail. Hey, Duncan? Hmm? Thanks for believing in me. I looked up at him and was met with the same pair of piercing blue orbs. <laughs> they seemed to speak for themselves. I felt myself inching closer, unable to control my actions in that instant. He leaned in too, and I was speaking. Oh shit. Oh boy. Ahem. I snapped back to reality. Looks like Courtney was at the door. Duncan let out a small t before turning his attention to the brunette. It's getting late. We should probably get some shut-eye. I nodded before making my way into the cabin of fort without a second glance. I heard some words exchanged, but my mind was somewhere else. What the hell was I gonna... What the hell did I nearly do? Oh, boy. We almost. I'm so close. I cannot believe we got cock blocked by fucking Courtney. I can. I absolutely believe that. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm shocked. <laughs> What the hell, dude? <laughs> it's Wattpad, you know. All right, so so what do you think so far? Is this like the best fan fiction you've ever read? It's it's up there. Uh, it is better than I expected it to be. Uh, yeah, because you know, for this silly little series and also the Harvey one that we read, I expected it to be like really bad. Oh, trust me, there are some bad ones, but this yeah. is like like I found this and I was like, holy shit, this is like. Like, this is, like, the fountain of youth. It was so hard to find, and I'm loving it. Right. I mean, it's pretty good. Do, do you think you'll get back into total drama after reading this? What? Well, who knows what uh, the future has in store for me. Absolutely. Will, will you be willing to read this with me again at some point? Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Please check out the... We'll have the the book down below in the description along with the author. Please do not harass anyone, because that's it's not cool. Nice. They're being their true selves in this world. Absolutely. Also, the, the author's really cool. Don't don't be mean. Yeah. Kindness right. and love. Thank thank you, Coda, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.